Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update from me, Trevor Neal, a research analyst at RRG Research BV. This update is being prepared for you on Friday the 25th for publication on Monday, Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK, the 28th of August. Today we're going to look at uh, the RRG of asset classes look at the position of equities and um, what's going on there in asset classes and then we'll look at US uh, major US equities and also the DAX and the FTSE. First then let's look at the asset classes using mainly iShares ETFs. You will see there are only two that are right of the vertical here outperforming the benchmark which is the MSCI equity index. Uh, we have got uh, the S&P 500 on the right of it but moving down. Much further on the right of it we've got the QQQ and that however is heading southwest. But these are both the outperformers versus the MSCI World Index. In the improving quadrant we've got the S&P small cap uh, 600 index and then here the Dow Jones. So if, if you think of it in terms of, of stock indices we've got the Nasdaq, the S&P and we've got the Dow over here. Emerging markets here, the IBOX corporate bonds there, here corporate bond fund, uh, the 7 to 10 year tre treasuries, the 350 index and gold the furthest on the left but these all in the lagging quadrant and gold the least attractive of all the assets versus an average of all the um, equity indexes. Now on this RRG chart this is a weekly RRG with the MSCI World Index again in the middle and looking at major indices versus it. So we had those three indices we had uh, the QQQ, which is tech uh, index, we had the S&P and we had the Dow. So how are they here? Here we have the tech index furthest to the right, but again turning in here. The S&P, same position as you would expect. It is the same one, but instead of having asset classes and uh, securities like the S&P, this was the ETF of the S&P. So it's moving down. So both of them are moving down. We've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average in a good direction here, looking it's heading northeasterly. Uh, it's close to the benchmark, but it's uh, heading in the right direction, but still quite far away from the 100 line from the area of our performance. We've got the European stock indices down, all of them in the lagging quadrant the DAX, the stocks, the CAC, and then here the poor old FTSE down here on the left. The Hang Seng has gone back to its normal place down in here. So the, the Russell also an improving picture. So we've got a picture uh, of the Nasdaq on the right but losing having lost some momentum. Um, the S&P on the right too but not as far on the right so not, a, not as relatively strong uh, but moving southwards so losing um, upside momentum and then we've got the Dow Jones here holding up I would say is the best way of describing it. Let's look at the Nasdaq 100 first. So we've had a strong move up since November. We most recently topped out just below 16,000, below the, the, the 16,600 high roughly high and we've pulled back to a little bit of support level which seemingly is hold us, holding us at the moment for the moment. The I've drawn a Fibonacci retracement here. I've chosen this bottom, not that bottom, but whichever one you choose, the pullback so far is quite a modest pullback. So even with this one, this higher uh, start point of 11,757, um, we haven't retraced even 38.2. Now, if we were to stabilize around here, then it's a very bullish thing because when the bears have control, it, they have not achieved very much. Down below we've got the RRG lines here. Here is the momentum line which has been deteriorating and here is the ratio line and you remember from the RRG versus the MSCI world we were in the weakening quadrant and pointing down. This is a daily NASDAQ chart. Now we uh, 
don't, don't want to reflect too much on past glories, but we got into the high of June. We had a high and high, and for the first time, we had a lower high in the MACD. We had a bearish divergence, and this set us up to be not a buyer of dips, but uh, looking out for potentially a reversal in the market, which we did see. We the MACD actually crossed in mid-July downwards and then uh, pulled towards it and then as often the case when it pulls away again this is the real move here and that was at the beginning of August. We came down, we don't know if you agree with me, but we had a channel here and very interestingly before we hit the 38.2 we burst below the channel and then it was a failure. Now when that happens very often we break out on the other side of the channel. The reason being is that people have got very short as the covering and then the breaking of the downtrend line of the upper side of the channel and uh, this takes us out to the other side. Now we saw that then yesterday we had the boost from Nvidia figures but very interesting that we see here this uh, big reversal candle. We traded up to resistance uh, from this high in here at 15,200 and 30, 240. We hit that. We also hit the 200 day moving average and then reversed very sharply here and now looking weak again. So this is looking weak and we see where it is in the weakening uh, quadrant and uh, moving down, getting uh, the losing uh, upside momentum as well. Now this um, does look um, as if we've had a um, a rally within a downtrend and we're about to resume the downtrend and um, retest this low here at 14,580 and probably break it. Now, I don't think this is the end of the world for the stock market but the next it looks as though we've had a down leg, a major down leg during August. Then we had a rally in the, uh, towards the end of August and now that rally seems to be failing and it looks like we're heading lower again in which case those of you that like that kind of thing and like to see their RSI rally to 50% and then start to fail again, correcting the oversold condition because we had got a little excessive there and then resuming the move. Maybe you'd be bearish already short. Obvious, there's a fairly obvious protection level here and then the next level. Where is the support after that? The next support level is down at 14,100. Uh, Quite a long way below where we are now. Got a little bit of support here, but we've already breached it, so it probably would go if we got down there again. A bit of a setup here, possibly uh, for a short trade, and some of you may well already be short. Now we're looking again at a weekly chart, this time of the S&P, and remember where the S&P was on the relative rotation graph. Also on the right of the 100 level, so on a relative basis, outperforming the MSCI world, but not as far as the NASDAQ, but also pointing downwards, pointing south, lose positive momentum. We saw it here when we saw the weekly crossing of the uh, MACD here. So it pulled, uh, came down, narrowed in during the uh, uh, month of August and turned down. We saw actual divergences on the daily chart, which I'll show you in a second. We've come down, we've had this very volatile week here, we'll dissect that in a second. But crucially, we're above the 38.2% level of the, the rally, so the rise. So if it were to hold here, this would be long-term bullish, indicate because while the bears have control, they achieve very little. But is it a different story in the shorter term? Now, a daily chart of the S&P. So here we are pulling back towards the 38.2% retracement, but holding above. That would be bullish. But then we've rallied after the topping out with the bearish divergence. All the highs in the MACD were high, higher high. Then we had lower high as we made this high here. So we were ready and we talked about it on these CMC uh, weekly updates and uh, we were ready for the turn and the market turned even the 50 day average has crossed below the 200 day average here so we're long term bearish now the the MACD of course is also bearish now we rallied uh, from this low here at 4336 up to this previous two highs in here and that low so it was a predictable resistance level high low resistance level that's where we got to now this is really fascinating 
that we have reversed so sharply now here. So it looks as though impulse reaction starting the new impulse and the retest of the 4,335 low and maybe coming back down here to 4,200 which you remember was a long term resistance level. On the RSI, high, higher high, lower high, bearish divergence in the RSI. The RSI went deep down, you could say oversold, but went right down to that reading around 20% at the low there on the 18th, I think it was, yes, the 18th. Then we rallied, corrected to 50% and turned down again. A classic behavior if we're having a reaction and then turning down again, resuming the trend. So we've got today's, this is Thursday, sorry, I'm doing this late on Thursday night. The, we've had this reversal move here, this this sign of weakness at some stage. Some of you might uh, want to be bearish on this. And uh, you've got a very obvious protection level, which is above these highs and that's low. And now Thursday's high. And this could be the beginning of the resumption of a move of A, B, C down to D. 4,200 would be the count for it. I want to end up by looking at the DAX and the FTSE. Now you remember on the RG they were both in the lagging quadrant the and the FTSE looking dire and moving upwards but in but furthest to the left in the RG. Now uh, here, here is the DAX. Now, this is a very interesting technical situation. We had a high here, 16,300 all this is. Hit it again breached it but immediately reversed, breached it and immediately reversed here and now it's come down pretty hard actually. It's testing lows here at 15,465, 15,484, those two lows there. The MACD has already turned down, it's looking vulnerable to really having quite a substantial sell-off. The natural place for it to find support is from this high that high and that low. So I'll just draw this line in. I think it's, it's about here. Somewhere around there, it should be a fat line, but uh, there, and that's at 16, it's at 14,600 uh, there. So this is quite vulnerable. Uh, it's got some momentum on the downside. We are within uh, only 100 points of these two lows here at 15,490 and 154. 1,484. If they break, then I think that we will be moving down swiftly, I would say, down to 14,600. That's a thousand points down. It's already crossed. The momentum is lost on the rally. The rally has failed. The attack on the uh, January uh, 2022 highs has failed, and it looks as though there'll be huge disappointment, which could intensify if we break these lows. Is there any stock index in the world to buy? There's bounce opportunity in the worst looking one on the uh, RRG. You remember the furthest on the left was our, our friend the FTSE. Uh, FTSE is actually in now a, a very point of a stiff area of long term support. We've got a range from 6,900 extending up to 7,700. We are in the middle of that range. So look at that there range here and we're in the middle of it there and we have come down now come down to 7200 and three times we've held it now this is uh, a potential opportunity isn't it Hot, trying something three times at the moment on this weekly chart we've got a bounce if it does bounce, it does meet resistance quite quickly. We need to go through 7,700 to release real upside energy. Needless to say, the weekly MACD is bearish and the RSI has actually given a buy signal on a weekly basis by coming up through 35 from below. This is a daily chart and uh, you can see the MACD is negative here. It has hooked around a little bit on this bounce, the third attempt to break down properly through the 7,200 uh, level. Clear. It's a little bit above it to be precise. It's a 7,200, 7,210. 7,200 would clear it. So we've had a little bit of a bounce here. We get substantial resistance to 7,440 starting there, but uh, from a trading perspective, um, this looks like it's holding. We've got an obvious place to, 
to uh, protect yourself. If it were to break that level, I think it would absolutely plummet. So thank you very much indeed, everybody. Um, I hope you find uh, today's session useful. I, this is uh, Trevor Neal signing off uh, as Research Director of ROG Research. May the trend be with you. Bye bye.